Well, how many is ready to whip the devil today? I tell you what, he is raging and he keeps on raging and going on. And pretty soon people get tired and they get ready to sit down and they quit. But it's not time to quit, it's time to go forward. We got to go forward in the Lord. I thought about the song that we sing so many times. I love these old songs that they sing. I mean, they have a lot of meaning to them. That's how I got saved, these old songs. The song that I, I, I was reading through says, Glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved. Anchored in Jehovah, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water, I shall not be moved. We have to plant ourselves by Jesus Christ, draw from that well from him, and we will receive the glory of God upon our lives. Time to read what God says. Over in the book of Jeremiah, I like the Old Testament. I like what he said there. He said in Jeremiah 20 and 8, For since I spake, I cried out. I cried out violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me in the derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak in his name anymore. I thought so many times I've been down this road for over 50 years now preaching the gospel. There's been a lot of times that I felt like I need to just give up and just say, that's it. I don't want to do it no more. But you see, there's no quitting place in God. When God calls you, he anoints you. I said, when God calls you, he anoints you. And you can't get away from it. So God called me to stay in the ministry. He said, but his word was in my heart as a fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. Second Chronicles 20 and 17 said, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand you still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord shall be with you. In other words, we're not going to quit today. We're going to stand and fight every ounce of the, uh, that we have in our body. God's going to give us through. I, I, I thought so many times uh, in the church world today, and I see it so many times in the church world, people quitting, pastors are quitting, preachers are turning down and saying we're not going to preach anymore. It's time to stand up and fight the devil on his own grounds. It's time to stand up and fight the devil on his own grounds. Come on, church. It's time to get with it and let him know that you are victorious. Uh, he said in the word of God. He said, greater is he that lives within you than he that's in the world. If he lives on the inside, that means you have the power to put him in his place. You have the power to put him down and say, devil, you're a liar. I come against you in the name of Jesus Christ. Use that name. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid to use the name of Jesus because I want you to know that name is above every name. That name will move mountains. That name will move sicknesses. That name will move everything that will put a, put a call upon him. He will be there every time we call upon him. He will be there for us. I want you to know there's no turning back. Even though it seemed like nothing is working the way it should. Even though it seemed like we're having a hard time in the ministry. It's going to work out because God said better days are coming. Better days are coming. Even though you don't feel like it right now, there are better days are coming if we'll hang on to Jesus. Uh, Paul made a statement like this. Uh, he said, for uh, though I speak uh, or preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I reproach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I will have a reward, but if against my will a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. In other words, he said, I am persuaded that he's able to keep me against that day that's coming upon me. Paul was saying he was going to be bound with his own girdle whenever a town he went into. I want you to know, even though the bonds were up on him, even though he went through several shipwrecks, uh, even though he went through the inner dungeon, even though he laid there in that dungeon, uh, I want you to know Paul and Silas began to sing the songs of God, and God began to open the doors, of, open that prison door, and set them free. When you begin to praise God, he will set you free. Come on, church. He said, when you praise God, he'll set you free. There is freedom in praising God. But I've uh, made a statement here the other day. I said, you can't praise God with sin in your life. <clears throat> you can't praise God with sin in your life because it'll come up every time. But you get that sin out of your life, and I want you to know you start praising God. 
Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. We sing that this morning. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I can face tomorrow because he does live. He's on the right hand of the Father making intercession for me this morning or this evening. And I can stand with him all the time. As I look at these scriptures, I see a law, a vow was upon him. There was no discharge, no intermission until his fight was fought and his course was run. I fought a good fight. My course is run. Now I'm ready to give it up. I'm ready to go to heaven. Church, listen to me. There is no quitting place in pastors, no quitting place in preachers, no retirement in preachers. You say, well, I know a lot of preachers that are retired. How do they do that? I don't know how God's plan is for retirement for a preacher. I'll be preaching until the day I die. I'll be preaching until the day I die. And then I can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. He can say, enter into the joys of the Lord. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you rule over many things. I want you to know it's time to stand up against the powers of the enemy. The powers of the enemy will come at us. He'll try to tear us down every time and know he's there all the time. Now let me say this. This obligation is not only to the preachers, but to the whole church. Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The word of God said also, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Let me share something with you. Jeremiah, as far as I know, never had one convert. He preached all those years, all those years, never had a convert. Preaching the gospel is not always easy. It is sometimes disheartening when people do not want to hear what you got to say. It's, you know, it's, it's heartening. I mean, people don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear the true gospel. They want to be tickled with their ears. They want just a, a little sugar coat on this. But church, you cannot sugarcoat the word of God. It's either the truth or it's not the truth. It's either it's a, 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 against God or we're going to be for him. You cannot sugarcoat the gospel of Jesus Christ. You cannot do that. You've got to stand firm. And I thought as many times in our church there in Modesto, California, we stand the truth. We stand up and fight the enemy. And it doesn't matter what he says or what he does. It doesn't matter where the people leave or come or go. We're going to preach the truth. It doesn't matter what. We're going to stand our ground and preach the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. If you don't do that, you've got a problem. And I look at our churches nowadays, and I grew up in the old Pentecostal church. I grew up in a full gospel church. God moved in a mighty way. And nowadays, I look around our church world, and I see how that is not what it used to be. They no longer preach the gospel anymore because they sugarcoat it because they're afraid they might lose their tithes and their offerings. It's not about souls. It's about money. It's about money. We can make money by doing this. But I want you to know God says it's about souls in Jesus Christ. It's about souls. They tried to stop Peter and John. Can you imagine the scriptures he said? Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have heard and seen. The true gospel of Jesus Christ. The three boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood their ground. I mean, they were going to a place that was going to be heated seven times hotter. The people that threw them in the fire, it slew them. And they were going into the fire. But they stood their ground. Oh, king, if God delivers us, one thing about it, we're going to be free. And he was free. They were free. Because I've always said it, and I don't know, maybe I'm wrong after preaching all these years, but when the king leaned down and he said, whoa, didn't we throw three men in the fire? He said, the fourth man looks like the son of God. And he wasn't even born yet. Hello? He wasn't even born yet. But he looked like the son of God. The king recognized the power of God. He recognized who he was. Shadrach, Meshach, they came out of that place. Not even a smoke was upon them. And the only thing that burnt that off of them was the bands that man had tied them with. They burned them off. Can you imagine walking around in the fire with Jesus walking with you? <clears throat> Can you imagine that? Walking with you side by side. 
Here you are in a, in a flame of fire, and God is with you. And no smoke came up on them. None didn't come up on them. The fire didn't even touch them. It didn't even look at them because he said, I will be with you in the fire. I'll be with you in the water. I'll be with you wherever you go. I'll be there for you. Can you imagine? I imagine old Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they begin to shout about that time. When they looked around and seen that the God that they served, he was right there with them. They looked around and seen that the fire didn't hurt them. They came out of that fire. And they came out better than what they went in on, on the fire. God always brings us out through the fire. And when we come out, we're better on the other side than we are as we're going through it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. It doesn't seem like it. I mean, we're going through the fire and we're saying, oh, God, I can't take it no more. It's too hot. There's too much going on. I can't take it. And I've been there a lot of times, and no doubt probably you have been there too. You're saying, God, I can't take it no more. You've got to come on the scene. But he's always there on the scene already. He's there walking with you. And I, I thought about Martha today when I, we had the service today. God is with her in the family. God will walk with them through the family. This is just a tragedy that's happened in their life, but God will see them through a tragedy that was unfold, uncalled for. But God will bring them through. I look at Nehemiah, who built the wall. The Bible says the rubble was so high that he got off his horse and he began to check out the wall. He said, all right, we're going to rebuild the wall. Right in the midst of troubles and trials, we'll build a wall. He said, half of you will keep your spears, the half, other half will work. And they built the wall back the way God said. God will rebuild your wall if you'll let God work with you. God will rebuild your wall if you'll let God work with you. He wants to work beside you and in you. David said the real, real word. He said, zeal hath consumed me because my enemies have forgotten thy words. Isaiah the prophet said, for Zion's sake will I not lay hold of my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth in our feet. God has called you and I, called you and I right here in this church. I never thought I'd ever be preaching in Missouri, California, Missouri, <laughs> Springfield. I never thought I'd ever be here. I never thought I'd even step foot on this ground. But somehow your pastor, such a loving man and his wife, they asked me if I'd like to preach today. I said, sure, I'll preach. Because I want you to know God is with me every step of the way. God will be with us everywhere we go. And I asked him, I told him tonight, I said, when we get on that plane in the morning at 6 o'clock, we always put angels on there with us. Put angels around the plane around uh, when we're flying through the air because we are protected by God, protected by, by God. I challenge you today to be another Josiah, a man of God who took his duties as a king. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the way of David, his father, and turned not aside to the right hand nor to the left. I look at another man by the name of Job. He said, my foot has held his steps, his ways have I kept and not declined. Job also made a statement one time, he said, though God slay me, yet I'll trust him. Sometimes it feels like we're being slayed. Sometimes it feels like we're going under. I prayed the other night, I said, God, I'm going under. I need help, I'm going under, I need help. And God said, I'll be there for you at all times. Don't worry about it. I'll be there for you. God knows what he's doing for you and I. He knows what you're doing. He knows what you're going through. He knows every trial, every trouble that you're going through. He knows what problems you have. He knows every situation you're walking through. If you'll turn it over to God, you'll make it to the other side. But you've got to turn it over to him. Because God, Job said, though God slay me, yet I'll trust him. I came into this world with nothing and I'll leave with nothing. Because God was with him on his side. And guess what? God blessed him more than what he did when he went in. He blessed him more when he went in and began to serve God. Aren't you glad that you're serving a God that's able to meet your need? Everything that you go through, he's able to meet your need. 
Everything that you talk about and, and complain about sometimes, he already knows what you're complaining about. He already knows all about it, and he's going to take care of it. So stop your complaining and start trusting. Does that hit anyone here? We don't complain, do we? When things go wrong, we don't complain. When things in the, in the roadway gets in our way, we don't complain. When traffic gets in there and starts moving us around, we don't complain. Yes, we do. It's time to stop and fight the enemy on his own, uh, on his own course. I look at another one of Daniel. When the decree, decree had been signed, the Bible said he went up into the upper room and he prayed three times a day. Even though the decree had been signed, he said, I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek God. Until they brought him down to throw him into the lion's den, he prayed three times a day. He sought God, and God was with him. I wondered sometimes, I said here the other day, I wonder if Daniel hadn't have prayed, if God would have shut the lion's mouth. He prayed and sought God. He was with him all through the troubles and trials. He knew he was going to get thrown into the lion's den. He knew that. But yet he prayed and sought God. And he figured out, well, if the lions eat me, I'll make it to heaven. Though God slay me, yet I'll trust him. Though God slay me, yet I'll trust him. Even, even though we go through trials and troubles down here, if God doesn't deliver us down here, he will when we get on the other side. Come on. He will on the other side. We'll be set free from the powers of the enemy. I look at David, another man that went through a lot of troubles and trials. I mean, he failed God. I made a statement here the other day. God cannot use a quitter, but he can use somebody that failed. Think about that. God cannot use a quitter, but he can use somebody that's failed. God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. That's what Paul said. So you know, you might fail God. Day by day, you might fail God. But get back up and say, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me of my sin, and I want to go on for you. Because I want you to know if you don't, you're going to wallow around in your pig pen and you're going to be eaten up by the enemy of your soul. God will take care of you if you'll let him do that. I look at Elijah. He was a man that went up against the prophets of Baal. I mean, they were cruel. They were cruel about it. They cut themselves. They hollered and screamed. They made their altar of Baal. They'd done all they could do, and finally Elijah got enough of it. He said, that's it, that's enough. He said, tear down the altar. And I said that to say this. Sometimes we have to tear down our altar and rebuild it. Sometimes we have to rebuild it. It's more than just going to church to serve God. It's more. Because you can go to church all your life and still not be a Christian. That's right, like a car saying you're going in the garage, it's going to be a... It's going to be a vehicle. No. Garage is a place that you put your car. But let me tell you something. God is there with us. So you don't want to leave God out of the picture. I look at Paul. Here was Paul and Silas. They went through a lot in their life. We haven't gone through nothing compared to what Paul's went through. We haven't gone through nothing what Paul's went through. I mean, he went through several shipwrecks. He was thrown in the inner dungeon. He was thrown outside the city and stoned to death. They thought they had killed him. He got back up and went back into the city preaching the gospel. Let me tell you something. That takes a lot of nerve. That takes a lot of God to get back up and go back in. You have to make sure that you're right with God. When you start standing up for things of God, you will not be the good old boy anymore. <laughs> You will not be the good old woman anymore because they're, going, they're not going to like what you say and what you do. you got to stand up for God. We need to say, as Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Almost to be almost persuaded. We're living in a world today of opposing standards, a world that has aggressive strategy. And in order for us to reject it, we must equally be aggressive. Let me say this. The days with faith is weak and its compromise has become general. When the sense of duty is vague 
it's time that we take a stand. Because I want you to know, you have got a pastor that loves the Lord. You have got a pastor that preaches the gospel. You got a pastor that will stand for you and help you along the way. You don't want to get rid of a pastor like that. You want to hang on to him. I think he's been here, what, 19 years? 28. We were 20 years at the first church we pastored in Stockton. And we left there and went into Modesto. I made a statement here this in the church before. and said, it's time that we stand and fight and take back what the devil has stole from us. He stole our joy. He stole our song. He stole our healings. He stole everything he can to get his hands on it. And what makes so bad, he doesn't steal them. We give them to him. We give them away. Take back what he stole from us. Take back the things that the devil stole because I want you to know he'll be there for you. When I look at Jehoshaphat, I see a man who was in declining years. He was an old man, but in spite of all this he had, not lost his touch with God. Just as soon as the news was brought that array, army threatened his nation security. He set himself to seek the Lord and pray. That's one of the greatest prayer warriors we have. He says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If we have a prayer life, we will win. If you don't have a prayer life, you won't win. But if you have a prayer life, you will win because God hears and answers your prayers. He knows the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man in availeth much. The impression that I get is that while the people were still in prayer, the answer came by the way of the Spirit of the Lord. Dr. Parker said, if we had to defend everything and fight everything in our own strength, and for our own ends, the cause would be perfectly different. But when God says it to us, you have the treasure in earthly vessels. The excellency of the power is of God and not of man. When he teaches us that we are the servants and not masters, creatures and not creators, with no grasp of eternity, it becomes us patiently to wait upon God. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew the strength. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord. Sometimes it's hard to wait on God when you're walking through the valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thou rod in thy stuff, thy staff comfort me. So when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we're going to take God with us because he'll be there with us and walk with us all through that valley. Let me say this. Circumstances are difficult and opposition is strong. Power to resist is so weak, weak and it has cause for despondency and despair. In many instances, the action and the attitudes are far from sensible. Not much worry, anxiety, and care are expended over situations with which the person is powerless to deal with. How many knows worrying will get you, make you sick? Come on. Worrying will make you sick. Stressing over things will make you sick. I mean, you'll be at the doctor's office real quick because you're stressing over things that you cannot change. It takes God to change them. It takes God to fix them. And when you let God do it, he will be it. I will not stop. I won't give up preaching the gospel. I'm going to preach the gospel until the Lord comes because, you see, God has laid it on my shoulders to preach the word of God. And I want the, the people that hear the word Listen to it and obey it. Don't fall away from it because God is good. Could our sister come to the piano at this time? <clears throat> Jehoshaphat set himself to seek the Lord. He soon discovered that when God is earnestly sought, wholeheartedly obeyed and fully trusted, he does not fail. Dr. Harry Jessup said, God answers with a great deliverance and compensation beyond this expectation. He can and does do the same today. I like what this one writer said, unless there is within us that which is above us, we will soon yield to that which is about us. We have to be trusting God at all times. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank God that I'm serving a God that cares. 
Thank God that I'm serving a God that will fight my battles. He will fight our battles. Sister, could you play that song, please? Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood Thank you, Jesus. was shed for me. Have you felt any way in your life? that you're ready to give up and call it quits, I want you to come and we'll pray with you. Because I want you to know the trials and troubles of life, they're heavy. They'll come against you at all times. They'll come when you least expect them. They'll come. But you trust in God, he'll lead you through it. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for these in the altar. Is there anyone else? It's not time to give up. It's time to go forward. Time to go forward. Let's stand to our feet across the building. Let's pray. Father, as we come to you, we come to the close of this service. Father, I realize without you we stand alone. But with you all things are possible. God, we don't want to give up. Just about the time that we think we're going to give up, you'll come and catch us unaware. We want to be ready to meet you at all times. Father, I pray that you'll go with each and every individual. Go with them in their separate directions. Lead and guide them and help them. Let them know that you're there with them. God, we praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, brother, brother, come just as I am. Won't give up. Hallelujah. Amen. Love that message. So glad I had uh, Sam did the message tonight. Very good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Won't turn back. Stand in there. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, uh, Great sermon. I enjoyed that so much.